blessings shamanic awak priestess here and i wanted to make this video like i've been really drawn to talk about this and i had a, a free moment um i took a moment today to do my nails which i said i was going to practice more self-care i don't even remember the last time i did my nails you know so um i took some time out today for that because the kids had a half a day today so I, um, because I had to pick them up earlier than usual, I didn't have any late afternoon readings, so I decided why not do my nails, you know, um, and, and wash my hair and, and comb it out and, and, and do like braids um, and things like that. So my, my hair is in the process of drying right now and braids help it to like not get tangled up and stuff and get matted because my hair gets matted a lot. Especially since um, I hit 40, like I notice that the texture of my hair has been changing. It gets matted a lot easier now. But um, I was, so I recently did an exchange with a friend. Um, she was a former content creator. Now she, you know, she felt drawn to pretty much delete her channel. Um, but I still talk to her outside of YouTube. And we did a deck exchange and... Um, I traded her My Dreams of Gaia. I have a backup copy of that one and um, Isla Norman in exchange for the New Era Tarot, which I showed in a video that I did uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, and, I, and she also gave me this deck, the Lightseer's Tarot. I'm like the only person, I think, on YouTube that doesn't own this deck. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, this is the mass produced. I love the cardstock on this deck. I'm a mass produced, you know, person but i did a test reading today um I, I was watching someone's video i f can't remember who it was and they were talking about tarot journals i do keep a tarot journal myself um this is my tarot journal and what the way that i do um my tarot journaling is um i only journal readings that have a really big impact on me so I don't do like daily journaling. Um, in the past, I tried to like pressure myself into um, doing more frequent journaling. I'm drinking tea. It's a herbal blend that I made. Um, it's my psychic tea. Um, it's really nice. Like it makes me feel really like high vibrational. But anyways, um, and um. I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so, and when I was journaling this morning and I was shuffling my new deck to me um, that I did an exchange for, I was thinking, I always do like a one card pull and I got the two of swords. And this, the reason why I'm sharing this reading is because it makes a lot of sense. I really have been feeling like the tools of swords lately um just kind of confused um about certain things you know um there's big changes coming up for me spiritually so in my business in my personal life in my spiritual practices um and things like that and um i do read reversals so the two of swords came out reversed okay which means that even though this is a very confusing time for me, um, there, there needs to be a decision made. You know, I know not everybody reads reversals, but I do. So it, when I see a reversal, to me, it's like double impacted. When I see that, it's kind of like even more so. Um, I need to break through the confusion. I need to make time to meditate and really think about um, certain things. And which brings me to why I'm making this video. Um, I asked myself when I got this card, I have been thinking about where do I want my channel to go? You know, I'm doing a deaf year this year, a low buy year. So no more than two or three decks newly purchased. That doesn't count exchanges. So because to me, exchanges is like getting rid of decks I don't use in exchange for decks that I may be possibly interested in that someone else may not be using. I kind of see that that's that being okay because it's like one in one out 
um, which is perfectly fine. But like actually purchasing and adding to the collection, I've only allowed myself two or three for the whole year of 2020. I got rid of a lot of decks that no longer resonated with me. Maybe I had a connection with them in the past, but I didn't anymore. And I either, you know, I, I either gave them away or traded them out for other things and things like that. So, you know, I started to feel this way back in October of 2019. I just had like an awakening when I went to visit family members and I noticed a shift in my spiritual practice where I made a video called Getting Back to Basics and finding magic in the mundane um, because I felt for me personally, and this is not a knock at anybody else, I felt like I started to buy for the sake of buying. You know, um, I've been on YouTube for two years um, creating content and things like that. And I feel that sometimes me, I kind of got sucked into the whole you know, buying things for the sake of buying things. And, you know, in October last year, when I didn't have any tools to do magic with, which is how I was raised, it is the way my mother taught me, it is the way that my grandmother taught me, it's the way that my great great grandmother taught me, you know, my, 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 the matriarchs of my family, because I do come from a very rich and beautiful. Uh, cultural and traditional spiritual practice in my family, you know, um, they practice with just the everyday. And I was talking to one of my students about this and she was saying that her family member, I'm not going to say what her name is, also practiced in that way. Like she used what was there and it wasn't fancy shrines or altar that into the naked eye, it doesn't even look like anything spiritually is going on. And that's how I started. And then I noticed, you know, as I got more and more deeper into YouTube, even before I was making a channel, when I was watching other people's stuff, I started to add things. And I was going through a lot of changes at the time. And I feel when I started to add things, it was like I was trying to fill some type of a void. It became almost addictive whenever Amazon would come with a new deck or a new crystal or something like that. Um, it didn't start off that way, but it became an addiction for me. I'm just saying for me. And I didn't feel good about that. You know, um, when the hurricanes in Puerto Rico happened like a couple of years ago, I went through this purging phase where I stopped buying so many things. I, I started to see like um, global warming and climate change and the effects it's having on the environment. So I started buying less crystals, but I was still buying a lot of decks. And if you collect decks and that makes you feel good or spiritual tools, this is not a video about that or, you know, making fun of or judging anybody else. But for me personally, I didn't like the way me buying these things felt. Um, so I had stopped buying decks for a while and I was really around 2017, 2018, a little bit more conscientious about my purchases. And then in 2019, when it came to deck purchases for myself personally, it got out of control. Like there's decks I didn't even do walkthroughs of. And there was 10 that I was grateful for, but I bought like 21, 22. For me, that's a lot. Um, I'm not going to use all those decks. A lot of them I ended up getting rid of. And I lost money doing that because you're never going to get back the money you spend into a deck if you resell it or if you give it away for free. And... I had to really was thinking about that, that two of swords that, you know, I had blinders on. I was refusing to see, hey, you have a problem. And so when I went and manifested really powerful rituals back in October of last year, and I didn't use any tools, it was just me and the spirits because in my afro-caribbean practices the spirits are in nature you know legba is in a tree ogun is in the train tracks you know what i mean um they um you know oshun is in the sweet waters and yamaya is in the oceans and, and things like that you know just going back to that and praying to them in their natural state in nature and communing and hearing voices of spirits in nature, it was such an awakening period for me that I decided at the end of last year that I was going to do a deaf year because I started to realize that I was trying to fill voids with purchasing things. 
it's nothing wrong with collecting things if that actually is enjoyable for you. But that wasn't the purpose of why, it's not the purpose of why I buy decks. I have never wanted to be a collector. Um, the purpose of me having tarot or when I used to have Oracle decks or Lenormand decks is because I'm a psychic person. And I started off using the tools in nature, water, reading fire, then evolving to playing cards, Spanish playing cards, regular playing cards. And then when I went professional, when I started doing um, professional readings eight years ago, it's going to be eight years, um, I started using tarot and studying it, you know, um, because when I was trying to read clients, which I can read them clairvoyantly, it was starting to give me migraines, all that energy pull, because in order for me to sustain myself, which I've been doing for the last eight years, I have been a full-time reader and root worker um, on a professional level. You know, I left the nursing career because the spirits called me. And from the day they called me and I went professional, it was successful for me. Like, it just took off. Like, people were shocked. Like, it, oh, my God, it, it, it took me years to get to that, you know. And the spirits have just have been walking with me. And I always believe that when it's your calling, it will happen. Like, you won't even know how it happens. It just does. Um... And I always like say like, you know, the, the relationship with our spirits are so important, at least for me. So, um, yeah, everything just took off for me and the spirits provided me a means to support myself and take care of my disabled son um, and things like that. And I did that for six years. I worked on a psychic hotline. I was one of the top psychics on there. I only worked for one psychic service um, when they got sold over. I started to feel something in my spirit. The spirits were calling me. I kept doing readings and I kept getting like the two of swords and, um, you know, the eight of pentacles reversed and, you know, and, and all these. And I'm like, what? And I remember I pulled a card from the Archangel uh, Tarot deck by doing virtual and Archangel Shamuel card came out talking about career changes. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean I'm going to leave my job? Like it just, you know what I mean? So and then two years ago it's just spirit talked to me and said you know you need to create a channel because i had tried to create a channel in the past and didn't last long doing that it wasn't the right time it's taking me a long time to even grow my channel but i don't know like i was already sustaining myself on the psychic hotline but they're like no make a website do this and I'm just shocked, like not shocked in a bad way, but shocked, like I'm so humbled and so happy with what's happened in the last two years with my tarot business, my spiritual business, because um, it's going to be three years this summer. Um, after like the first, you know, after like the first maybe six months, I was able to completely leave the psychic hotline and then go into um, this full time and things like that. And that's what the spirits wanted me to make the channel for. They wanted me to, you know, share my path with others, like-minded people, um, share a different perspective that I wasn't really seeing on YouTube, um, in celebrations of Afro-Caribbean, um, and, 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 and Taino spirituality, um, you know, um, serving the Orishas, talking about laws, talking about hoodoo, talking about conjure, talking about Haitian voodoo, um, and things like that. When I first came to YouTube, I was leaving Santeria. So Santeria is not something that I practice any longer, but I do have lower initiations. I have had spirits mounted in me, but the spirits call me to a different path where I can still serve the Orishas just in a different tradition, but still part of a close tradition. Um, and they've really been calling me to Haitian voodoo, which is the next path that I've been doing, like I said, a year and a day and been preparing myself to get fully initiated into that um, spiritual practice as well. You know, I am an initiated shaman. So I have various paths that I'm initiated to that, you know, but everything started with Santeria and before Santeria was Espiritismo Criollo, you know. Um, I come from all these beautiful backgrounds and, and traditions and things in my family. 
And that's what I wanted to share. I wanted to share that perspective, that perspective of an Afro-Caribbean woman of color, um, a woman who has African descent from her mother's side, her beautiful Haitian mother, um, a woman who has Puerto Rican ancestry to her beautiful Taino father, indigenous father, um, and there's Taino on my mother's side too. Um, I wanted to share that with YouTube, you know, and I know there's other channels, but a lot of times they speak Spanish and things like that. I'm someone who speaks fluently in English and Spanish. Um, especially when it comes to Epiritimo, it's hard to find people that speak um, English because there's some people that have been, you know, their second, third, fourth generation here and not all Latinos, not all Afro-Latinos, not all Afro-Caribbean people speak Spanish. You know, with me um, being Haitian, um, my French Creole is not that great um, because, you know, I wasn't born in Haiti and that happens, you know, so... So I totally get that. I wanted to share my perspective, you know, and um, my path, you know. I, I felt like I had something uh, to share. And I feel like sometimes I've tried to assimilate in the past and I've removed those videos from my channel where I would look back at it and I said, I wasn't being authentic. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video. Like, be authentic, you know? Don't be afraid of being different. Like, yes, I don't journal every day. I don't have an elaborate tarot journal. I love watching people's journals. I think that's great. People that have like art talent, but I was feeling pressured to like be like that too. And no, I can I can look at something and appreciate it even if it's not something I specialize in. I love watching people do beautiful art. My my son and my daughter are so artistically like talented. And my daughter can sing beautiful like a professional singer. I cannot sing like that. But I can appreciate her talent. But it doesn't mean that I have to be a professional singer or strive to be a singer like her. You can still be your own individual self while appreciating other people's things, you know? And that's that's what I'm doing. Like, I'm going to continue to to create content like I started doing in 2000 and, you know, towards 2017, 2018, and throughout 2019 the further and further and as time passed i've been finding my voice here on youtube that's when i noticed my channel started to grow because i was talking about you know cultural appropriation i was talking about um the racist terms of like black magic and where the root of that comes from i was starting to share knowledge is why i'm so inspired to do February and celebrate melanated excellence and talk about the contributions that people of color have made in spiritual practices. It's going to be a beautiful month of vlogs, you know, and I'm already working on that. I already have everything outlined. I know exactly what videos I'm going to make a one day and so on and so forth. It's why when the spirit started to call me to do these hoodoo courses, which it's amazingly been sold out for the rest of 2020. Like there's no more, like that's amazing. You know, the last spots got sold in two hours is because once I started listening to my authenticity and really being myself, everything else started to fall into place, you know? And so I'm going to continue to share my path. I'm going to continue to advertise my services. Um, I'm going to continue to, you know, share things that the spirits allow me to share on this channel. You know, I'm going to continue to try to continue to create a community and, and make videos that are, you know, that, 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 that resonate with people and things like that. You know, um, I also realize there are things that I'm not comfortable doing. For instance, I watch people do free readings on YouTube and somebody asked me, what do you feel about that? I don't feel bad about it. I feel like everybody's spiritual calling is different. There are people that are spiritual counselors and they approach tarot as more of either they just read for themselves and it's a self-discovery, self-healing practice. Some people like the artwork of it. There's people that don't even know how to read tarot but have a bunch of tarot decks because they are collectors of art and they see like every deck as little pieces of art. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, there are people that read professionally, but again, they're like, I don't do predictions. I don't believe in that. 
and I approach it more of a, you know, working on self or shadow work or working on inner child. And that's fine too. Like what's wrong with that? Um, there are people that create YouTube channels and they do free um, community readings and energetic readings and energetic forecasts. Um, there was one person on YouTube that I watch. Um, her channel's on hiatus right now. Um, she did crystal readings. I love that. I found that so fascinating um, and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't have a problem with people doing free readings on YouTube. That is a personal choice and that is private. That is between you and if you believe in spirit guides or your higher self or wherever this um, the messages that you believe are coming through, that's personal. There are people that have hundreds of ducks, you know, that's personal. Like, I don't, I'm not on YouTube because people always ask me what I think. Though, I'm not on YouTube judging people. If a channel doesn't resonate with me, I simply don't watch it. I don't sit here and bother people and tell people how to practice their spirituality. Like, we need to do what's right for us. But for me personally, I don't do free readings on my channel because I I was saying on my other video, I, I've i been doing this, like really doing this for eight years and I read tarot hours and hours on day. So I don't have any type of energy left to do a community reading on YouTube um, because I do it for a living and I do it for so many hours a day that I want to save that energy for my paying clients. Um, I also don't give free readings to my friends. There's readers that exchange readings between each other. That's something I don't personally do. Like I know people that do readings. I've, they could tell you, um, friends that I have outside of YouTube that are content creators or even people that don't create any content that I just know that um, work in the psychic industry or you know do tarot readings or whatever. I don't ask for free readings because in my culture, you have to do some type of exchange. Um, so, um, if I get a reading from a friend, I pay them as if I'm just a regular client and my friends, even my best friend, she pays me like a regular client, you know, um, and things like that. My, even with my children, when they get readings from me, they always do something in exchange. Like they'll do an extra chore at the house. Um, my oldest daughter, she's really good with reading. So her and I would exchange a read, you know, or something like that. Um, I've actually paid her. She's actually paid me something. Um, whatever she feels you know she's my daughter so whatever she feels intuitively to pay um because in, in my culture that's something very valued you know um it takes a lot of energy you know it's it's like a it's like uh i don't know it's like it's a scene as a talent um another thing that i find that i doesn't resonate with me but i can watch videos on are altar tours um, I used to feel bad because I've never really done them. I, I showed my white altar, you know, I showed one of my altars in the living room, which I don't have that altar set up like that, um, one time and it's okay. Like I didn't feel any kind of way about it, but as far as like really showing you my spirit room and stuff, I'm not saying that may change in the future, but for now, like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, I'll create a mock altar even when I'm, you know, doing my, my lectures and stuff, but I was just raised not to do that like and as far as like the orishas for instance you know um olufin doesn't like when you give away his mysteries he likes to keep things private um there's many patakis about that um the the, the power in the secrecy like someone emailed me today to kind of like teach me all about the and i said no they call me stadios mysteries for a reason and they choose who they want to serve them, who they w are willing to have a working relationship with. And when it's the right time, they will find you that teacher, that elder, uh, the ideal situation, and they will divulge that mystery to you. Um, that's why I feel like it's, it's important to, um, I charge for spiritual investigations because when you make a monetary investment in something, you're showing the spirits that they're worth the knowledge that that person's sharing with you. Because in, in, in my path, in, in my cultural practices, we pay the spirits either with physical money and with things like food and all that kind of stuff. You know, every culture is different, but we have to physically pay our spirits. Um, there's a saying in, in Haiti that even the spirits don't get a free lunch. So when the spirits do work for us, we pay them for their work. 
everybody has to work for what they have. Um, I come from that type of culture in the Caribbean because a lot of people think, oh, Puerto Rico is a part of the United States. No, they have 60% poverty. And it's actually higher now since the hurricane, since all the um, earthquakes and things that are going on. They've been economically unstable for a very, very long time and in a very bad recession because of the debt that they have because of the because of the hedge funds situation. So, you know, um, yeah, so you know what I mean? So it's like a lot of people in, in the countries that I come from, being a shaman, being a culandera, being a santero, being a palero, um, being a voodoo san, being a sancista, being an espiritista, being any of these types of spiritual paths, they take money because this is how they sustain their family. This is how their family eats. I was listening to somebody the other day of Haitian descent, and he was born in a very poor part of Haiti, and his grandfather, who practiced, was literally able to buy land with the workings that he did when people saw, oh, this person is really good at what they do. He was able to take his family out of poverty. That's exactly what I have been able to do with the gifts the spirits have given me. Um, I pay my, 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 I pay my house through this. I, I put food in my children's mouth through this, clothes on their backs. You know what I mean? This is my soul. This is, this is what I dedicate myself to. And, and the spirits provide for me through my gifts. So I value them. I have never felt bad about charging for my readings. I have never felt bad for charging for my spell work because even when I got initiated, I had to pay the elder that initiated me. You know, um, like I said, in Haitian culture, there's a saying, nobody gets a free lunch. Everybody has to work. Everybody has to work. And so, you know, that's another reason why, like I, um, you know, I value the gifts that I have, and this is the path that the spirits called me in. But there's people that, you know, they offer free services, and they like again, there's nothing wrong with that. If they can do that, God bless you, like, or, or may the spirits bless you. That's wonderful. That's just not the calling that I have. Um, and there will be people that will try to make me feel bad in the comment section or contact me. Oh, you're not spiritual because you do this and that, and I will feel bad. And the spirits are like, why are you feeling bad? You know what I mean? This is what we've always done in this lineage, in this family. So, you know, and things like that, you know. Um, I don't feel bad anymore that I don't share the full mysteries of the spirits because in my spiritual practice, I'm not supposed to. We believe that the reason why the Orishas and the Loas and the ancestors walk so strongly within us is because there is so much, there's still so much sacredness and secrecy in the practices. It's why when people are like, oh, what books should I read? I don't give you recommendations because a lot of the books are written by anthropologists, are written by outsiders. There's this book that they, it's I think it's called like Santeria book or something. And um, she even admits in the foreword, oh, when I wrote this book, the, the, the Babalaos were giving me misinformation. They were lying to me because they didn't want me to know the mysteries of the things. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of the times these voodoo books and Santero books and all these books are written from an outside perspective. And so the person um, doesn't really practice or they're getting misinformation from the people that they're interviewing on the books because the elders know that in secrecy lies the power and that it's a sacred and individual relationship that you have with your spirits. Um, we have to remember the price that the ancestors paid to keep these secrets. We walk on the shoulders of our ancestors. Okay, we walk on the shoulders of our ancestors. I'm going to say it again. We walk on the shoulders of our ancestors. Many of our ancestors had to get whooped in the back. Okay, have died, have spilled blood. But one thing they kept alive was the, the, the traditions they brought back with them from Africa. You know, and... These Afro-Caribbean practices were practiced in the South of the United States. They were also practiced in certain parts of South America. Africans went to places like Mexico. They were Afri there was slavery in Mexico. There was slavery in, in the Caribbean islands, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Jamaica, 
Trinidad, you know, they brought our African ancestors. That's what they call it, the transatlantic slave trade. They brought our people to almost all parts of the world. And they started talking like, so you have people in the Caribbean, if the dominant language was Spanish, they spoke Spanish. If the dominant language was um, Portuguese, they spoke Portuguese. If the dominant language was French, they spoke Creole. Um, if the dominant language was English and they talk English. The only thing that divides the African ancestors today is language. You speak the language of the person who colonized you. That's it. But we're all the same. We're all one. We all have a lineage to it. And, you know, the way that I that I that I feel a connection to my ancestors is by guarding the secret because that's what an elder does. That's what an initiate does. We are sworn to secrecy because we're supposed to guard the secrets of those that paved the way for us. Um, in Voodoo and in and in, 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 in Santeria and a lot of these Afro Caribbean Espiritismo Criollo, there's a lot of Taino influences. Um, my students were shocked when they were like, wait, there was indigenous people in the Caribbean. Yes, the Arawaks, the Tainos. When they when they were being killed or committed mass suicides because they were also under enslavement. They were, they were enslaved, they were raped, all that kind of stuff. They were the first slaves in the Caribbean. And when they started to dwindle down the number, they started bringing the Africans into the Caribbean. Um, and they also were able to cross cultures when they were running away from slavery, the Africans and the Tainos, and they shared secrets with each other. They saw that they had a lot of the same deities in common. There's semis that have now become loas. There's semis that there are that are in 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 in, in other you know that, that are served in Espiritismo and Espiritismo Sancismo. There's still a lot of Taino influences when they were creating the Veves that today you see in Haiti or anybody who practices voodoo, they they, they when they're activating those Babies, there's Taino influences. Ezili Danto fought on the behalf of the Taino people when they were having the Haitian revolts, when they were freeing the when when Haiti became the first nation to free itself and was founded on free slaves that were tired of being oppressed, you know. And to, till today, they're trying to make Haiti pay for that when they had to pay restitutions that made the country go bankrupt. But one thing you cannot take away from Haiti is no matter what goes on in that country, Haitian people are strong. I feel like Haitian people are like the roses that grow, you know what I mean, that grow in the pavement. Like there's beauty in, in the strength of, of the Haitian people. Um, and, and that's why Haitians are so closed off with voodoo, you know? And when I started going under the, the, the tutoring and the mentorship, I understood the sanctity of that. I understood the sanctity of making these vows to keep certain things secret, you know? And, and that's what I was realizing today, that it's, there's nothing wrong if a person wants to keep certain things out of such a public forum, out of their YouTube channel, because that's me being myself. I wouldn't feel right, but I still watch people that make oils on YouTube and get share recipes. I've, I've watched people that do spells, live spells. That's nothing wrong. If that's what they want to do, then that's, that's fine. You know, for me personally, the spells that I do, because I know the, the history of my family and the price that my family paid in order to keep our spirituality secret, I only feel comfortable sharing it with my children my godchildren and my future students. I don't feel comfortable sharing that in such an open public space, you know? But that doesn't mean that my path is better than anybody else's. It's just me being authentic to myself, you know? Um, so, same thing, like I, I tried to modify decks and I, I found out I didn't like it. But I like watching how people make decks their own because, you know, everybody's different. It's just, honestly, I like decks to stay the way that they came. It doesn't do anything for me to modify a deck. It actually made me very sad and I ended up buying an, an unmodified deck because it doesn't speak to me. You know what I mean? Or liking decks because everybody else has them and they're the popular deck and, you know, and things like that. Like, I've just learned to love what I do. Um, same thing with there's channels that teach people tarot. And I think that's wonderful. That's something that I'm not passionate about. 
like because the way I read tarot might be different than the books or whatever um I'm not really passionate about teaching that at this time you know yes tarot I love it um I, I read for a living um it's a part of my life but it's not something that I want to teach publicly on YouTube maybe someday I'll do a course on it or something I don't know but it's not something that I you know that I want to teach on YouTube I don't know why just it's not something I'm interested in and I don't want to make content just because other people are making content if that makes sense I'm going to keep doing what I do you know and I think that we all need to do that I think that it's so important in a community to be your own unique self and to have your own unique voice and to always be true to you, you know, what makes you comfortable? What does it make you comfortable? And so I'm going to listen to the message on this card in the reverse. And I, I made a decision. I'm going to keep doing what I do, you know, and see where that takes me, you know, um, continue to do my readings, continue to do my spell work, um, and just continue to mentor and, and help and, 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 and heal and just keep moving forward. There's projects that I, that I have coming up this year that I'm excited about that I'm going to share at a later, a later date um, because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much going into the unknown this year. Um, there's just some really great things going on. And I want you guys to be here to watch that journey with me. Um, I'm going to keep sharing my journey. I'm going to keep sharing my journey. And I hope that this channel continues to grow. This community continues to grow. And um, that's that's about it. I just wanted to share that one little thing and I will see you guys in February unless I make another random video, but I've just been very talkative lately, making a lot of video. I'm drinking my tea, so good. Mm. Yum. <laughs> so anyways, much love, much light, much blessings. This was just like such a ramble, but um, I just wanted to make a video about being authentic to myself. Um, that's why I'm doing the deaf here. These are feelings and things that I'm journaling about and exploring and things like that. And I just realized I was letting myself be influenced by what everybody else was doing and then questioning, well, why don't I like doing that? Why can't I be like everybody else? But I think like you need, just need to be yourself. You know what I mean? If you authentically enjoy those things, keep doing them because I'm, I'm going to keep watching it. But for me personally, like, it's not anything I want to do. You know what I mean? So anyways, much love, much light, much blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until the next video, guys. Bye.